Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on Lumber Capital Log Yard. In the last video, we were left guessing, pondering the reason behind the strange task that the boss gave us in part one. But today, we are going to dive right into the heart of the matter and uncover the true purpose behind what we did in part one. Let's go. Since this all started with the boss, it only seems right that we should ask him. So Jade and I hopped in the truck and drove to the only place we knew he could be, the woods. And now we are here at his log site and ready to listen to what he has to say. Let's hear from him now. Okay, well, I, the girls showed up here at the log site with uh, a lot of questions. And I guess I should back up and tell you, I, I came up with that, this idea of cutting logs at about three in the morning. Um, I keep a notebook by the side of the bed and uh, you know, I just jotted down some ideas and I think this might be one of them that you know, um, was just a, a bad dream that I had. Anyhow, the idea behind it was we have a very interesting scenario going on here in north central Pennsylvania. Um, we have a lot of gypsy moth kill. It predominantly affects red and white oak. Uh, so a lot of the, the maples are looking good. Uh, the entire maple family, the cherry looks good. Um, the beech, the birch, some of the inferior trees, they look okay. Uh, but it, it's attacking sort of the heart of our industry uh, here and on the property where I'm working it got hit two years in a row so you can take a look at some of the wood um, this is just you know one skid this is already into the the cambrium of the tree uh, this will just be firewood um, some of it sound some of it isn't and you know we're just moving as quickly as we can to get it removed from the woods but in doing that and being a small business uh, I think I told you many months ago our goal was to handle the hardwood that we have coming in so we wouldn't predominantly be a softwood mill anymore so the idea behind what I was having the girls cut was to get two primary pieces of grade lumber off the log and then two pieces of quarter sawn lumber off the log and you know, my phone was ringing off the hook with all sorts of problems that they were having. First of all, by uh, not taking more lumber off the log, the log wasn't tight against the dogs of the mill, which created a, scenario, a difficult scenario and clamping it in place. That was one of them. The second problem that the girls ran into is we wanted to cut through the pith of the log, through the very center of the log and take a board, a wide board out of the center and then cut that board in half. That would be where your quarter saw material is and I wanted to have a 5-4 board come out of the center of that. The problem we ran into was the log didn't hit the rollers on the mill. Uh, the rollers you know, can lift the log so that you can make a flat cut if, if the back of the log is thicker than the the front of the log. So the log didn't sit on the rollers and we weren't able to do that. Uh, that was my, pro my fault in that when I ordered the mill I could have ordered it with an additional roller and an additional um, dog in the back that would uh, catch it. But 
I never thought I would cut material under eight feet in length, which is where the rollers sit uh, right in the center of the mill to catch an eight, eight and a half foot log. So the logs I sent the girls were six feet, eight inches long, and I wanted those cants to come out of them, four cants, and the way that I designed that it be cut, the cants were easily liftable. And I know, um, and, you, and everybody watching the videos, you see that uh, you, the, as the lumber comes off, it's one thing to lift a piece of lumber off, it's another thing to remove a cant. Even in hemlock, like taking a six by six off, if it's 10 feet long, the girls are plenty strong. They don't have that much trouble with it. Uh, but when you get into a piece of hardwood, you've, you've one and a half times the weight of hemlock. So it's extremely heavy. So my idea was to cut the pieces smaller that would actually be firewood. And I, I know, oh, that's terrible to, to use it in firewood. We have to have the sails. So, you know, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to get ahead of what I can sell, uh, especially coming into firewood season. So we wanted to use some of the log for firewood, some of the log for premium lumber. It didn't work. Uh, so we've been out here sitting uh, at the front of the skitter, uh, drawn in the dirt with all sorts of different ideas of how we can do it. So we came up with a whole other scenario, which I think we're due as a video again. And the whole idea is that we don't waste anything. And, uh, you know, before you leave a bunch of comments, uh, no, we don't want a bunch of the, the nice wood going into firewood, but you have to sell your product or you're out of business. And you have to move it because there's another log going to be right behind it the next day coming in on the truck. And our landowners need to be paid and they are paid long before I'm paid. Uh, you know, if you think of just firewood scenario, you know, you're eight, nine, ten months out uh, getting your wood seasoned, and anything coming and going is already, you know, long paid for. You might not even be at that log site anymore. Uh, so, like, keeping the whole thing in motion is a constant battle of, you know, how can we optimize our product and Jade had a couple good ideas we might be able to utilize, uh, which again, we'll show you. We don't know, you know, uh, if, if these ideas are gonna work. Uh, fortunately, with the YouTube channel, we are able to advertise our products and get within two or three weeks some feedback as to whether something works or not. So we'll probably keep doing some shorts, showing you some different uh, ideas of what we have. We might do some white oak shingles, some white oak lap siding. Uh, that would really be exciting. Uh, absolutely uh, rot resistant, bug resistant wood uh, going into shingles and lap siding. Uh, it'd be a little heavy, but wow, wouldn't that be a, a neat addition to your house? We also want to do uh, some premium red oak lumber. Uh, I know the red oak market right now is very soft, but man, it's, it's America's number one wood. And we want to see that maybe have a revival and maybe our YouTube channel could even help facilitate that. So we want to take some different looks at how to cut the logs. Uh, we want to be careful about the weight of the product coming off and, you know, what we can do to, you know, make it into a saleable item. So I don't know, you know, this is a follow-up video. Uh, you know, like I said, my phone was ringing off the hook with, oh, this isn't working, and you know, what were you thinking? I woke up at three in the morning, doodling on a piece of paper, that's what I came up with, and that's what you get when you wake up at three in the morning, uh, thinking you had a brainstorm that's gonna make you a million dollars. I have about one of them a week, and I don't think I've ever struck gold yet, so uh, stay tuned. And the girls will, you know, let you know uh, what's going on and, and what's working and what isn't. And we'll just keep trying new ideas, laying it out there for you. And, uh, you know, leave your comments there. I'll do my best to answer them. I'll take a little more time uh, over these two videos to answer them. Um, and uh, I guess we'll just go for there, from there. So thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your participation. Um,
certainly in the channel and have a good evening. Bye-bye.